For a very long time now, students who are so inclined have been able to grab a paper off the internet. I remember the paranoia I felt after learning that the students at my new school, where I was teaching a decade ago, had actually created their own website for sharing work. It was very extensive. (laughs) To hear other teachers tell it the answers to absolutely everything at the school, everything that any teacher had ever taught in the past, were just waiting to be picked from the digital tree branches over there. Students could grab quiz answers, homework, exam responses, essays, everything. I remember during the final exam of my first semester there, I actually looked out the windows while the kids were taking the test because I had this insane idea that kids were up on the roof dangling strings down with the answers taped to the end of them and kids were going to look out the window and see the answers like floating in the air at the top of our three-story building. That's how nervous I was because that's how much people were telling me that my students were going to cheat. But it didn't really happen. Not that much. That year, my students held poetry slams. We put on live radio shows together. They wrote one-act plays and performed them. We had an independent reading festival and invited younger kids at the school to come. None of these things were very easy to cheat on. And little by little, I stopped worrying so much that they would. While the internet today and the new AI tools make it easier than ever for students to cheat on extended writing questions sent home for completion, it's really just a slight level up on what was already available. Worrying about kids cheating is not new. (laughs) We've known that kids could cheat on extended take-home writing for a very long time. And whether they're doing it with their own internet site, whether they're sharing things at at their school, whether they're searching for papers online, or whether they're using this new AI tool, we've always known they have the option to get help when they shouldn't. However, there are just so many ways to design assignments that call for creative work in modern mediums that AI can't do for them. So today, I want to share why I'm not worried about this new AI and why I don't think you need to be either. Ready? Hey there, I'm your host, Betsy Potash, and one-pagers, project-based learning, and choice reading are my jam. I believe in you, and my goal is to help you explore all the creative possibilities you dream of for your classroom. I'm an educator, a chocolate cake aficionado, a traveler who can't wait to get back to Barcelona, and the kind of mom who brings her own mini makerspace to her kid's classroom when she comes to volunteer. I know this for sure, creativity isn't always easy. As a creative teacher, you get parent calls you treasure, and plenty of sidelong comments you'd rather forget. But here's the bottom line. Creative education can ignite a spark in your students and change their lives forever. You and I know this. You're an innovator. And while it's sometimes hard, it's so worth it. So let's explore the world of creative education together. Welcome to the Spark Creativity Teacher Podcast. So today's episode is going to be on the short side, partly because I have been very sick for a while and I don't have much of a voice, and partly because I really just want to see what I can do to respond to the fears I'm seeing bubbling up all over, um, and I don't really think it's going to take that long. I'm seeing articles like this one from The Atlantic called The College Essay is Dead, and I'm seeing Instagram posts and just sort of general fear in my Facebook group, Creative High School English, about this AI. And I really think that, you know, the the flames are being fanned to try to make English teachers feel panic. It feels like this English teacher apocalypse. But really wonderful listener of the Spark Creativity Teacher podcast, you do not rely entirely on long five paragraph essays to assess your students' learning. And so I think that if we all calm down and take a few breaths, we're going to realize that there are many, many ways that we're already engaging our students in reading and writing and speaking that GPT-3 cannot do for them. And so we don't need to worry so very much. Can AI create a hexagonal thinking web about dragon hoops connecting key artistic choices, literary moves, and students' personal experiences 
and a network of carefully constructed critical thinking? Can AI research representation of indigenous peoples in the film industry today and then create an Instagram style research carousel with a teen audience in mind? Can AI create a podcast to help language learners master complex vocabulary in English three words per week? Can AI launch a literary food truck, design an app for Elizabeth Bennett, read All American Boys and create a book trailer for it? I don't think so. But what AI might do is send a ripple out to remind us all of the power of in-class writing and the importance of creative work in modern mediums well beyond the five-paragraph essay. So for me, this moment is a great moment. It's a time to reach out to your colleagues and share all the creative projects and prompts that you've been working on. It's a chance to say, hey, I could host a PD workshop for the department, or I could share this new video project I've been working on with my grade level team. It's a time when maybe you can open up your door and invite others in to visit your next hexagonal thinking conversation or Harkness discussion. If the people around you are feeling stressed about AI, this is a good chance for you to step into a leadership role and make this moment a springboard into something new and something creative in your community. Just by the fact that you're listening to this podcast, I know that you're perfectly positioned to help lead the way. Like I said, it's a short show today. I really just wanted to say this. I could go on and on about the different kinds of projects that I don't think that AI can do, but really that's what the over a hundred episodes before this have been talking about. Um, So I know you know there are a million things that AI can't do for your students and they're wonderful things. Um, So don't let it scare you. Thanks for listening. Until next time, take care of yourself and stay creative.